Today, I'm going to be talking about the Zoomfly Flynet after 100 miles. Today's run of 10.6 miles, 7 minutes, 52 seconds per mile across the 100 mile threshold in the Nike Zoomfly Flyknit. And I've got to say that this is one of my favorite shoes that I've ever run in. I was able to take this thing out for a variety of runs, mostly along the lakefront, getting them wet a little bit like I normally do, uh, but taking them on longer runs as long as a 15 mile interval run. And I even raced with them recently in the Chicago Half Marathon. Didn't quite have a PR that day, uh, but I had an amazingly good race and I felt really strong and had a lot left over, which gave me a lot of confidence going into the taper as we lead up to the Chicago Marathon. And uh, one of the things that I will be able to say about this is that it's a lot like the Zoomfly SP and has a lot of the same characteristics. It has that same kind of step off, like at, you're standing at the end of a stair and it has that same push off feeling that you get from the Zoomfly, but it has so in a better way. Uh, the main difference between this and the SP version or the original Zoomfly version is that there is a carbon fiber plate versus a nylon infused carbon plate, carbon infused nylon plate. Uh, and the other difference being that there's React foam in here uh, versus the Lunar Lawn that was in the previous version. Now, uh, one thing that I'll say about this in terms of having the React foam in it is that it's really softer than the Lunar Lawn was. The Lunar Lawn seemed a little bit dense to me, and that also led to a little bit of discomfort in some early miles uh, or earlier than I would expect for the Zoom Fly. Well, that was a, a peculiar shoe that when I looked at the individual characteristics, it shouldn't have been a shoe that I liked, but I really liked that one too. But I like this one even more. A lot of the quirkiness of the previous version was kind of mellowed out and all the strengths were kind of bolstered up. And so a really great second iteration for this shoe. Uh, in addition to the softness, I do feel like the carbon plate uh, added a little bit more in terms of the push-off strength. And that's really how I would describe this shoe. It is something that really helps you in your push-off and makes you feel stronger there. I don't know if that's just completely mental or not, but if it's just a placebo, it's a really cheap placebo if you think about it. And so I really appreciate the shoe on that level. Another thing to notice about the React Foam versus the Lunar Lawn is that I think that the React Foam is wearing better, uh, uh, at least in terms of the outsole wear. Where I'm seeing most of the wear is just to the outside of those pink pockets here. And so you could see a little bit of it is wearing away. But other than that, there doesn't seem to be a lot of wear on this shoe. On this shoe, there's a little bit of wear. I think I've been getting a little bit sloppy in my stride and uh, some of the rubber where the rubber meets the React Foam, it's starting to wear 
a little bit right there. The rubber itself is holding up surprisingly well. I don't know how they do it with the Zoom Fly. Uh, when I think about the way that rubber, I don't know if it's a different kind of rubber or they're doing something different to it than say uh, the Pegasus, but I always feel like the Pegasus would show a little bit more wear than something like this, or maybe it's just the outsole pattern that makes it appear that way, but the outsole is holding it really well. And the other thing that I really like about the React Foam is that one of my biggest kind of aesthetic complaints of the previous version of the Zoom Fly with the Lunar Lawn is that when you run on Lunar Lawn and it, or it's exposed like that, it tends to wear and feel or look like, like a wrinkly old elephant's foot. It just really unappealing for me to look at it. I don't know, there's something about it. Maybe I'm being idiosyncratic about it, but there's something about it that's really just bizarre in my mind. Uh, you don't see that here. The React Foam is holding up really well. And I'd say in terms of visual appearance, the React Foam in the Zoom Fly Flyknit is holding up even better than the wear pattern in the Epic React, which has React Foam in it that you run directly on as well. So uh, I think that as Nike is putting this in more shoes, it's able to refine the way that it's implementing it. Uh, I don't know if it's just the stack height of the shoe, but this React Foam seems softer than the React Foam in the Epic React to me. Uh, I didn't really like the Epic React, and so when I heard that this shoe was gonna be coming out with React Foam versus Lunar Lawn, I was excited because I wasn't a huge fan of Lunar Lawn, but I was also cautious because I wasn't a huge fan of the Epic React. But the way it's implemented here, I really love it. I generally think that I like React Foam plus things. In this case, it's the React Foam plus the carbon fiber plate. And in the case of the Pegasus Turbo, it's the React Foam plus ZoomX that's in there. And that's another question that I get quite a bit. Which would I want to have? Which would I want to have the Zoom Fly Flyknit or would I want to have the Pegasus Turbo? And I think that in a lot of sense, it comes down to a matter of preference. I've put in 20 milers in this shoe and really enjoyed it. I've put in long distances on this shoe and really enjoyed it well. I think either of these shoes, you're going to do just fine for longer distances like a half marathon or a marathon. And again, it comes down to a lot of preference. And the way that I like to break it down is if you have a really strong feeling towards the Epic React and love that shoe, then I'm gonna probably recommend the Zoom Fly Flyknit. If you really enjoy the Pegasus and have a, a really good experience in those, I'm probably gonna recommend that you race in the Pegasus Turbo. Now, I'm not saying that like you can only have one or the other. Uh, having both is a really great luxury and I'm very lucky to have both of these shoes. They're both very good shoes, each in their own right. And I don't think that one is mutually exclusive to the other. The way that in my mind, I tend to break it down though, is that for a shorter race, I think I might want to be in the Pegasus Turbo. For a longer race, I might want to be in the Zoom 5 Flyknit. And that's just because of the different like mechanics and what I think it does to your stride or at least mentally does to your stride. In the Pegasus Turbo, I really feel like uh, it's wanting me to have a shorter stride and a faster cadence. And that's how it's making me feel fast. There's like a spring to the Zoom X foam with the React that's in there uh, that makes me feel like it's uh, pushing me forward or leaning me forward a little bit. With the Zoom Fly flying it, I feel like the difference is that uh, I'm getting a, uh, like the, the fastness comes from the push off, like I mentioned earlier. And that's what's pushing me forward, not uh, that faster cadence, which I get from the, both the Pegasus and from the Pegasus Turbo. And so that's kind of how I would split those two out and kind of answer that question. But like I've been saying all year long, it's a really great time to be a runner. And these are two really good options uh, to have in terms of running. Some final other thoughts in terms of the way that this shoe is holding up after 100 miles. Uh, the the fly knit material itself uh, is doing really well. Mine tend to look a little bit grayer because at the Chicago Half Marathon, as you're going in and out of the post and pre-race area, there's like a baseball diamond you walk through. So it was pretty dusty through there. Uh, so a lot of the dust is still in here and any dust that gets in here does kind of tend to get trapped. And so I don't know if other people's are wearing quite this way, but mine are taking on more of a grayish hue, even though they started out as, bla out as black, but I kind of like it. Uh, I think of it akin to what's going on up here with my hair, it's starting to get a little, not salt and peppery, but uh, not quite as pure black as it, it once 
was, and I think it makes it look distinguished. So a very good looking shoe. I've had no problems with Flyknit. I didn't have, I didn't expect any problems with the Flyknit. I didn't have any problems with the Flyknit in the Epic React, not having it here. I really like the way that the Flyknit feels on my foot. Uh, in terms of lockdown, I'm not a person that really gets too worried about whether a shoe's really locking me down in there. Uh, so I might not be the best person uh, to comment on it, but if you're the type of person that normally is very concerned about it and likes to have more of a structured cage around your midfoot, then flying it generally might not be for you. But if you've been in Flyknit before and have liked it, I'd say that the execution here is similar, if not a little bit better. I feel like this is very snug. There's a little bit of padding in the collar area for a little bit of comfort, and there's a little bit more structure down here. Uh, but otherwise, you've got, basically you're running with a sock with a cushion on the bottom of it. And when I run, the shoe just feels like an extension of my foot, which is ultimately what I'm always looking for when I'm thinking about a running shoe. So those are my basic thoughts on the Zoomfly. Find it after 100 miles. Now the big question is, will this be my marathon shoe? Hopefully not. And the biggest reason for that is the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit is set to release on October 4th. Hopefully I can get my hands on a pair that day. Uh, that gives me not a lot of time to really test out the shoe. I've not run in a Vaporfly before. So it gives me a little bit of time to test out the shoe. I have something that I might be doing with them that could be interesting uh, coming up uh, that race weekend, but uh, we'll see if I can get my hands on a pair in the first place. If I can, I'll probably race the marathon in the Vaporfly, but if I don't, these are gonna be a really good pair of shoes to take to the Chicago Marathon. Thanks so much for watching today's video, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?